All right, we're gonna get into intensity sprints, but focusing particularly on acceleration. So in your program, it's gonna say, all right, in a rep range of four to seven reps, we're gonna teach you what footwork to apply, what setup to execute, to then maximize the potential of those athletes getting faster. So we're gonna break that down into four steps that our athletes can learn. We're gonna get them today. So when you program intensity sprints, it's not just writing those range of four to seven reps, it's we're going to write this range of four to seven reps with this particular starting point. So to get us into position, I need to get make sure our athletic position is dialed in. And I'm gonna give you the one coaching cue that I'm looking for today. So go ahead and show me your universal athletic position. Toes forward, knees over your arches, you're in steps. All right, now, a little bit wide. Go ahead and narrow that in, narrow that in, I mean. Landmark I'm looking for is your knee directly over your arch, you're in step here. Push your hips back into your hamstring. We need to find a bounce. We need to have a, a feel for our arches. Again, too wide, narrow that up. Knee directly over that arch, that instep. All right, so our hamstring is the most difficult muscle for our athletes to feel tension in, especially our high schoolers. So that's why it's so important for a coach to direct that athletic position. Remember landmark, knee over your arch, your instep, toes forward. But I'm looking at this forward lean. So I need my chest out over my knees, hands right about here. Anybody play football before? Awesome, you ever hear the term pad level? I'm looking for a low pad level, right? I got a flat shoulder pad here for me to take on and wrap somebody up, to put right there. So that's what I'm looking for. I need my chest out over my knees. So when we learn our footwork today, you're leading with your chest. You're keeping that pad level low, cool? All right, so first step, go ahead and work your way to this line here. Ignore the cones. Work your way to this line from your universal athletic position, we're gonna perform a forward step. This is gonna be our first step. So I'm in my UAP, performing a forward step. Which direction do you think I'm going? Forwards, all right. So it's more difficult and challenging than I'm making it out to be. But I'm stepping in this direction. Hold on to this one. The one thing that I want you to do when you change direction, no matter the step we're learning today, I want you to push. So I'm gonna be facing forwards. I'm gonna ask this to go right foot first. So if I'm stepping with my right foot first, and the one thing I wanna do when I change direction is push, what am I gonna do with that left? Push. So I'm loaded up, all right, ready, go. Push, one, two, three. I'm focusing on three steps in stride. We're short on time today, and I need to teach you a lot in a window. So three steps, stride. And go ahead, hustle back to this line. It's gonna be our baseline. All right, so athletic position. You know you're going forward, don't cheat me. On me, push left, step right, ready. Don't you cheat. Go, push, good. One, two, three, stride it back, hustle back, hustle back. All right, pretty, pretty good group. No one made the mistake I'm looking for, that's okay. Here's our stress, athletic position again. Now we're gonna go opposite foot, opposite foot. So a big push right, left foot steps forward. And this way, ready, go, push. Ah, I got you, Gil. Hustle back. I think I did what you were looking for, uh, drop step. Yeah, so some call it a draw step, drop step, some call it a fall step, so we're gonna call it a different name, all right? But with a forward step, it is challenging. It's an instinct that we have to train. This is gonna be a quick foot, quickness. When we talk about quickness in our training, it's this forward step. It's not very powerful, but it's heading in the right direction. Forward step, hold on to that one. The next one we're gonna talk about is our open step. So what's the one thing I always wanna do when I change direction? Push, all right. So I'm gonna set up my athletic position. I'm heading this direction towards the building. So my right is my lead leg, my left is my trail. What I'm gonna do is push off of my trail leg, open up on my lead leg, and go into my sprint, one, two, three, stride. Now our cones come into play. I'm gonna use these lines as the visual for the footwork I'm looking for. So I'm gonna start with my toes on the line. This is this straight line I'm looking for, toes on the line. I'm gonna ask that we rotate, open up. My expectation though, my first step, I'm gonna get back in line with this line. Okay, I'm actually gonna go this way. So I'd watch my right foot. I'm gonna push left, heading towards the building. First step, ready, go, push and I opened up, I created space versus just stepping on a tightrope. 
We talk about our lunge. What do we want to do with our lunge? Nice wide base. We are preparing for this moment in speed and sport. All right, so we're going to get two people. Paolo, go ahead and jump on those cones. Sheena, Paolo, face forwards. Sheena, make sure those cones are on his heels. See how they're a little bit wide? Make sure he's in universe athletic position. Brad, you're up. Go ahead, heels on the cones. Now, guys, what you're going to do, you're going to rotate towards me. I didn't ask you to move, so keep this left heel in line with this cone. Now pivot towards the building. Awesome. So his first step, their first step, are going to be in line with these train tracks, in line with these cones. So narrow that stance up just a little bit, Brad. All right, so on a big push left, his right foot should end on this cone. Paul, are you tracking? Ready. Go. Push. All right, hustle back. Next two, ladies, we're up. Rotate, pivot towards the building. All right, big push left. Ready, go. You see how she opened up. All right, so I'm gonna get one good one here. Ladies, pretty good job. Paul, you fucked it up enough for us to go back and cover it. So athletic position. I'm gonna start by rotating towards this. I need to get back to this train track. So I don't wanna just pivot, turn and go. I need to create space, I need to push. I'm gonna try to cover two yards in one step. Nice and relaxed, ready, go, push. One, two, three, got it. Also coaches, next rep, what I'm gonna have you do is watch from the sides. Because the first step, I don't wanna see you just stand straight up and go. Where's our pad level? We're nice and low. So as I open up and step, I need to be right here. One, two, three, I'm a pulling guard. I'm getting ready to take somebody on, okay? So, next athlete up. Odd number, have you gone yet? Awesome, rotate towards the building. Big push left. Go, push. Good. All right, opposite direction. Athletes up, we're facing our trucks. Rotate. Big push right, ready, go, push. What you do? Needs to really open up. So you gotta open up a little bit more, Stephanie. So your first step was just right in this pool here. We wanna get out to those train tracks. All right, next group, we're gonna add some complexity to this. Brad, you're up. Awesome. Gil, you're gonna be coach for Sheena. So Brad, you can go facing this way. All right, rotate. But Gil, go ahead and you're gonna set a pick for this athlete. So we're almost gonna force them to create space and move around us versus stepping down that line. In tightrope, I need them to open up, create space. So athletic position, Sheena, you're going to push with your right. You're gonna navigate Gill in one, two, three hard steps. Ready, tracking? No. All right, Brad, switch places. Brad's my teammate, he's gonna set a pick for me. Nothing's gonna change about this drill for me. So stand tall and I'd uh, right check yourself, yeah, okay. He's said and pick, I'm going to push off my trail leg, open up, get back to my train tracks. One, two, three. Cool? Yep. All right, switch. Ready? Rotate, pivot. Right, now I yeah, see revenge here. <laughs> Go! Push. Good. All right, next drill. Gil, you're up. Paula, be a coach. You got him, Brad, or her, Brian. Ready? Go! Push. So maybe take one step towards your right or force them to exaggerate that opening up. Navigate space, be an athlete. Ready, go, push. Not bad, a little round, but we can adjust. Okay, how do we feel about our open step? If he, hearing the term create space, if you've seen James Harden do it, and I'm a biased Rockets fan, they play tomorrow playoffs, let's go. Right, he creates space by what? Stepping into his guy and push off of it. Dirk Nowitzki, what does he do? Hard knee into the junk and then his, his backup fade away. Okay. All right, anyway. I have a question. Answer. I remember when we lunge, you know how when we do lunges, a lot of people, the faults are we come in and out. So is that the same thing for even sprinting? So when they're there, when we turn, we're not coming around, right? Because yeah, always want our first step, knee over that arch, that in step. Whether it's here, whether it's here. This is even an open step, even though it's 45 degrees, or I'm a cornerback, open. I gotta go 180 and pull it down the field. Either way, what's the one thing I want to do when I'm doing those? Push. Cool? Okay, now we're going to get into our next step. This is our crossover step. What's the one thing I want to do when I change direction? Push. Push. 
So my crossover is going to be now adding a pull. I'm still in my athletic position. This is my lead leg, this is my trail leg. I'm going to push off of my trail leg and pull with my lead leg. So lead leg's now not opening up. I want to use it, all right? But watch my pad level as I push off my trail leg. Use my groin to pull. I'm staying nice and low. Cool? All right, so one fast, heading this direction, nice and relaxed. Push, pull, pull. Just turn and, go. turn and go, push, pull, but stay low. All right, so athletes, go ahead and get on your cones. Face our, face our bay doors. Pushing left, pulling right, ready, go. Next group, let's go three. Sheena, let's go three. Watch them move, coaches, ready, go. All right, hustle back, facing the opposite side. Last reps here, last reps here. Push, pull, ready, go, push. Last rep, eyes on. Get lower, Stephanie, shoulder pad level. Ready, go, beautiful. All right, hug it up, hug it up. So we coached, we coached up three steps, but there's four steps that we need to focus on when we talk about programming our intensity sprints. So no longer does it say just, all right, we're hitting four to seven reps today. I need to say we're hitting intensity sprints, a range of four to seven reps with our open step. Intensity sprints, a range of four to seven reps with our crossover step. Because that is the most coachable time when we're for our athletes for sprinting and acceleration. And if we think about it, athletes on the field, they really don't get that opportunity to run a straight line that often. But what do they do get? Start, stop, accelerate, change direction, push, pull, go, and stay low. So we're putting them in that position to get opportunity, reps, exposure to the footwork, whether we're talking volleyball, football, soccer, it doesn't matter. We're talking about movement through space, teaching our athletes movement versus just movements. Any questions about these? So from baseball, lots of crossover steps. Um, do y'all, I mean, obviously we want to practice out of a UAP, but we had a lot of guys that would start with their arm so they could kind of rip through. It does not matter. If that's what motivated them, you know what that is? It's a coaching cue and a direction to get them to do what? Get their pad level down, right? I'm a contact sport athlete. I like pad level. I like staying low. But if it's baseball lead, I'm still right here. So it's a tip, a direction to help get that athlete's trunk, torso in that, that leaning position. So again, we're going to train all four steps and then hand an athlete off to the sport coach for them to decide what works best. But our athletes have the tools, right? We're not limiting to them just, just one. Because what's gonna happen when a moment in sport calls upon one of the footworks that we're like, nah, we don't need that. That's when they're gonna fail. So we are empowering them, giving them tools of these four steps with our intensity sprints, and that's what's gonna carry over. That's what's gonna transfer most to the field. So do you vary it up through that rep range, or do you do that rep range in open, and then you move to cross, or do you just change it up? Our intensity sprints are in that four to seven, but when they slow down, we cut the reps. In terms of footwork, this could be an any time we run, we're just practicing this like we did today. All right, open step, one, two, three, stride. So I could do open step, one, two, three, four, stride, one, two, three, stride, one, two, three, four, five, six, stride. Depends on how long my sprints are that day. Okay. But every day is an opportunity. I'm sure you practice that in baseball too. So when we're doing, um, just so I can try to process, like if I'm going to do intensity sprints, am I going to focus only on open catch step for that day? Or am I going to change it up right. in between? Right. Just one. You're right. In asking this question, Definitely so try to block it together and focus okay. on do you have how much time you got with your athletes? An hour. An hour, but how long a season? Eight weeks? Yeah. Four weeks? Yeah. Eight weeks? Eight weeks. Awesome. Two weeks each step. Okay. And then leading with that plyo. Okay. So one last sports reference. So the the forward step, that is quickness. Right? This is where if I don't know where I'm going, it's gonna get me there the quickest. If I'm a soccer goalie or if I'm a running back and I don't know which one of y'all is blitzing, I can just push and all I have to do is get in the way. So I'm getting there quicker. But our last step that we talked about, our false step, we like to call it a plyo step, where I'm loading and exploding. So I'm get some momentum behind my center of gravity, 
This comes into play if I know where I'm going. Best example is a blitzing linebacker. I need to get as much oomph behind me to take on a guy like John, to get through him, to get to the quarterback or get to the ball. So all these movements have their purpose in sport. We are just giving our athletes the tools to take them on to the field and let them do athletic things. Make sense? Yeah. Awesome. Crossed it. Good day. That was good. Thank you.